it's Tessa with Hip Over 50. So what is happening with the UK property market in January 2023? Well, has the hot property purchases of the pandemic cooled off or is this market here still smoking hot? Um, of course, during the pandemic, house prices kind of went a little crazy as everybody started to move around the country, get out of the cities, go for the country, go for the coast. But now things have kind of settled down a little bit as people are actually going back to work. And they realize, you know what, a, a three or four hour commute one way just isn't going to cut it. So they have moved back into the cities and those people that have decided to move out to the country have already done so. So those markets are no longer as hot as they were. Um, things, like I said, have calmed down a little bit. Um, and home prices are still rising faster than wages, though. I mean, the average mortgage as a percent of income in the UK is a whopping 56%. That is incredible. So that affordability is really an issue. Um, and it puts people on a knife edge, I think, if they need a mortgage and probably contributed to a pressure cooker environment where everybody decided to go on strike at once so they could get a little more in their pay packet to pay off their mortgage. I mean, it's no wonder, you know, 10 years, prices have seen a whopping increase of 60%. Of course, you love to see that if your home is paid for, you don't have a mortgage, but if you're trying to get on the property ladder, that is a little, a bit of an issue for affordability again. Um, of course, house prices did start to slow down a little towards the end of 2022. No surprise. I mean, thanks to our prime ministers playing musical chairs back in September and then coming out with that disastrous mini budget, top it with a cost of living increase. Oh, yeah, let's not forget the mortgage rate increase as the Bank of England tried to cool off inflation. Um, it's all been like a perfect storm. And actually, prices are remaining relatively stable. Um, I think it's the ones that are needing a mortgage that are going to be hit the hardest because Mortgages have kind of ticked up to about 5%, maybe just a hair under there. So that is definitely affecting some people's, you know, affordability, um, able to get on the property ladder. Um, I don't think housing will crash the way it did in the recession of 2008. It's just a very different, you know, market and scenario here. Um, and, you know, the law of supply and demand is still very much in the works here. I mean, you can't get around it. This these small islands have a lot of people on them. I mean, in 2021, we had a population of about 67 million. Um, and that works out to a little over 700 people per square mile, in case you were wondering. Um, our neighbors across the channel in France have twice the landmass of the UK, and they only have about 300 people per square mile. And then you look at our neighbors across the pond, the United States has 40 times the land mass as the UK. So they just have a little under 100 people per square mile. So a lot more room to build homes, a lot more room for affordability. Um, so like I said, the cost of building will always be a little bit higher because of the cost of land. And I think that will continue to buoy up the market. Um, even if house prices or house price growth falls by 8% in this year, as some are predicting, that just means we'll be returning to spring 2021 levels, which were still above pre-pandemic levels. Um, and considering house prices rose in one year from September 21 to September 22, 10%, I think a correction of around 8 or 10% is about right. It, it's just going to take the heat out of the market, as they say. Now, there are a couple of wild cards lurking that I just want you to be aware of. They may not affect anything, but just so you're aware of it, um, you know what, if mortgage rates keep rising or if they, you know, push down affordability for some folks or some folks aren't able to, you know, refinance their home at a price they can't afford, there may be some repossessions coming into the market. That's just a fact of, you know, a lot of what goes on when mortgage rates go up. The other wild card um, could be the fallout from the Grenfell fire disaster in 2017, which is still kind of out there. It's not really doing anything at the moment. Um, they're still trying to work out who's going to pay for what, but it means there's thousands and thousands of flats that are basically unsaleable because they are not, people can't get mortgages on them and they can't get insurance on them. So that remains to be seen how that's going to, um, like I said, filter into the market at some point. It may not affect it at all. Um, the other possible um, hiccup might be 
you know, I just was reading that the Bank of England was saying, you know what, if we have a recession this year, it's going to be a soft recession. Well, if we do have a bit harder recession than they're predicting, then that, of course, affects people's ability to buy a home. I mean, right now, the job market is pretty strong. 3.7% um, unemployment, pretty low. Um, in fact, they're crying out for people that retired early in the pandemic to please come back to work. But the Bank of England is predicting that it's going to tick up to 4.9% unemployment in 2023, and then again above 5% in 2024. So we'll see. If jobs are lost, you know, people can't buy homes. So um, that may, again, that may affect the market at some point, but so far nothing has happened on that front. Um, so what is the average cost of a home in the UK right now? And of course, I've mentioned in another video, you know, real estate laws can vary in by country by country in the UK. So my advice is general guidance. Um, but right now, the, what is the average price of a home in the UK? Well, in September 2022, Gov.UK said it's about 295,000 pounds. That's across the entire UK. Um, I took a peek on the Right Move property portal, and they said the January figure this year is 362,000 pounds, which is quite a spread. Um, I'd like to see what the Gov.UK or the ONS figures are when they come out in another month, I think. Um, but that is that's quite a spread. Um, if you're thinking in dollars, folks, that's about three hundred seventy-two thousand dollars up to four hundred fifty thousand dollars. And keep in mind, these numbers are a little inflated because they're factoring in, they're averaging in London housing prices, which are much higher than the rest of the country, and much much higher than you know places like Ireland, perhaps, Scotland, Wales, um, to the north of England, where prices are quite a bit more affordable than these figures. But if you're looking in the south of England, yes, these figures are probably pretty accurate. In fact, they're probably much higher in quite a few locations. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind, if you are thinking of going ahead and buying property here, I want you to know that, for example, Americans, I'm familiar with the rules there that govern real estate agents and real estate agent tra transactions. And there's quite a lot of oversight by the government to make sure that people's um, consumer interests are protected. Unfortunately, that is not the case here. Um, again, Scotland has slightly different rules, but in England, under existing rules, estate agents, as realtors are called here, are not required to operate with any regulation. I know a lot of them do comply with some regulations, and um, that's great, but anyone can get into the business of buying and selling or renting you a home. Anyone can put a shingle up and call themselves an estate agent here. So just keep that in your back pocket. If you are going into this, I want you to have your eyes wide open. Um, just, you know, do your due diligence, make sure you know your pricing, have a sharp team on your side, be prepared for it to take a little bit longer to follow through, and just keep your eyes wide open. And I'm sure it'll be fine, but I think it's better to go into it and have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. Um, so that's all for now. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. And if you like it, Great. If you can subscribe, that's even better. I will come back to you again with another property report in another month or two. And until then, bye for now.